It's one thing to get saved. Many people get saved. We go out soul winning. We go out preaching the gospel. We lead people to Christ so that they could receive that free gift. And out of those people that, that receive that free gift, there's a much smaller percentage of those people that turn out to actually be disciples of Christ, followers of Christ, people who actually take it upon themselves to say, you know what, now I'm going to try to do what's right. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to devote my time, my energy, my efforts. I'm going to make a sacrifice. I'm going to go and do these things for the Lord to show my appreciation, to show my love, and, and just to be right with God. That's being a disciple. Now, um, and that, you know, we sang that song, and I know, you know, some people may be wondering, we say, is it all on the altar? I have no problem singing that song. I don't think that song is doctrinally incorrect because it's not talking about being saved. It's talking about having peace and having rest and yielding. It means allowing your body, allowing your soul to be led of the spirit. If you do that, then you will have peace. Then you will have rest. And you're offering up your sacrifices on the altar to the Lord. That's how you're going to have a happy, peaceful, blessed life by doing that. And that has to do with what we're, that's why we're saying it today, is this, it has to do with this sermon and being a disciple of Jesus Christ and being a follower of Jesus Christ has to do with you making the choice to make the sacrifices for the Lord, to do, to invest your time, to devote your time to, to, to following him and, um, and just doing what God would have you to do. Now, we're going to start off with the cost of being a disciple. We're going to get later on to some of the benefits of being a disciple because there are many benefits of following Christ and doing what he wants you to do. But before you even get started, we need to recognize the cost involved. You have to sit down and realize, look, if I'm going to do this, if I'm truly going to, from the heart, serve and honor the Lord and follow Jesus Christ and follow in his footsteps, you need to understand there is a cost associated with that. It's not free. It's not going to be easy like your salvation was. Salvation is free. Salvation is easy. But to be the follower, to be the disciple, to walk in those steps that Jesus walked and to try to follow him as closely as possible, that comes at a cost. That is not easy. Look at Luke chapter 9. Verse number 57. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Now, that's a great attitude to have, is it not? Jesus is approached by someone who says, Hey, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. Wherever you go, I'm with you. But people have a tendency to say things really quickly without fully thinking about them and, and realizing just the whole reality of the situation. So Jesus answers him when someone says, Hey, I'm going to, anywhere you go, I'm with you, Jesus. I'm right there with you. Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Now, he doesn't say, don't follow me. Of course, Jesus wants him to follow him. But right off the bat, he's saying, hey, just understand this. If you're going to, if you truly want to follow me wherever I go, just realize, you know, animals, they have homes, they have places set aside for them to go at night. He says, but I don't have a place to rest my head. I'm going to be going out and I'm going to be preaching and I'm going to be wandering and we're just going to be out and no, we're not going to go work and then go home at the end of the day. We're going out to work and I don't know where we're sleeping tonight. I don't know where we're even spending the night. Do you really want to follow me? Now, I mean, just think about that today. Anyone can say, you know what, that, that would give you a little bit of pause. Even forget the example that this is Jesus Christ. Like, what if I were to come up to you and say, hey, man, I've got some really cool work to do. I want you to help me out. Come follow me, and we're going to go. And I, I, can't, I can't really tell you exactly where we're going. I don't know where we're going to stay. I don't know where we're going to eat. I don't know, you know, but just come, trust me, come follow me, and we're going to go and do this thing. You'd be like, oh, I don't know. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we need a better plan than that, right? Now, if you're just trusting me, I get it. I understand. I'd be the same way, right? I'm not going to be that, touching, that, that trusting or, or um, willing to do that. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, that is what he's asking us to do. So you're following me. 
it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. There's going to be, you know, sacrifice made in order to follow me. Jesus Christ sacrificed all of his time, all of his energy, all of his efforts. What was it all about when he was here? We read throughout all the Gospels, everything that we read about Jesus Christ had nothing to do with himself or his personal life or anything that was about him. It was always, always, always about ministering to other people. His entire life was dedicated to be a sacrifice for us, for others. And that's where he's saying, hey, just, you, know, you want to follow me? Great, but just realize this. This is the way it's going to be. It's not going to be comfortable. It's